Monaco Pizza presents S S D P P the Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! All right. Well, first off, let's just say welcome to Leo, and we're gonna call him Uncle Leo from now on. Yay! Hey. Okay. We- so, so we- <laughs> you've been hiding this forever. Somehow yeah. on your on your first day home, you're able to actually put together a video and put it out, which I was shocked at. Me too. Uh, it was adorable. Um, and Leo was going to make an appearance to start this show, but he pooped himself. So, like aggressively. aggressively. He pooped aggressively. Which is good because not all babies do in the first few days, and that gets a little scary for the parents. So this is a yeah. good. This is good, and he'll he'll come. He'll make an appearance. He's so hungry. He's so hungry too. Yeah, he'll he'll be down for a few minutes and. Uh, you know, with the patience that a brand newborn baby has, None. but um, <laughs> Adam, I, I, we've, got, I, we've got so much time for Leo to make an appearance. We do. Yeah, yeah. I can barely hear you. By the way, just oh, so really? you know, yeah, your mic's a little low. Is that a little yeah. better? That's way better. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. There it is. Okay. I, I gotta know. I gotta know for you two, maybe Adam especially. Mm-hmm. Adam, you gotta prep every show, and you gotta look for stuff, and especially over the past few months, you gotta dig. Like Indeed. you're looking for truffles to find stuff. And yeah. every time I'm like, Adam, you may not bring this up. Yes. How hard was that for you? That was very hard. I think because, well, there's so many things that I talked about on the show, you know, being a new parent. Um, and I would always want to say, and Steve, you're going to know what this is like. And like, but I, and I think a couple of times I did and we actually did. had to edit them out. Um, or like, you know, or like you, you went to catch yourself or, or, or at least you're going yeah. to. Yeah. And well, was you, a- you slipped up, uh, entirely on live on Sportsnet and no one noticed. Steve, not you no, specifically, no, not but Yorkie. Uh, no, Justin Bourne. Justin Bourne. Justin Bourne, uh, completely blew it. Uh, because we brought him on and he had just had his second child. So he's delirious, which I am learning fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, he just forgot. He knew Carolyn Cameron knew Dave Amber knew. And if you go to the, I said this in the video yesterday, but if you go to the 53 and a half minute mark of the watch party for uh, team North America versus Sweden, you can see all of our brains explode at the same time, <laughs> realizing what's happened. And I just Elmer fudded over it. Um, enough that no one in the chat even noticed. I didn't get a single tweet or anything. So, and now he's uh coming back in i don't know yeah here he comes here comes little leo here we go leo hey you kicked it yeah you kicked in the door like the kool-aid guy (gasps) there he is Ah! there he is (laughs) he's awake eyes open too (gasps) he's He's awake he's not a plastic doll i saw a couple i know it did it sort of looked like he was like it it didn't yeah steve it looked like you picked up a toy in your it really did video (laughs) oh he's hungry you can you see him. See his dad? mouth. Is that is that what that means? That's what it means. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, He's you're being again. you're being. <laughs> That's why you're here, it. Adam. <laughs> Leo, you are being held by the embodiment of disappointment. In that. <laughs> How you doing? He, he's so sweet. So oh, he no. looks a lot like Mrs. Dangle, right? He's got the I, Mrs. Dangle. He face does, he looks like a baby. Well, he even she like said anything. she's like he oh, looks no, like no, me. No, no, no. So she has called this. We'll see though in six months. We thought Everly looked like. Caprice, and then uh, uh, six months later, she's like my twin. So yeah, you guys are a spitting image of each other. Just don't you don't know you just yeah. don't know how it's going to happen, and that can and it can change again, right? It can change from one parent to the next mm-hmm. depending upon the stage. So let me ask you this, Steve. Yeah, I think you're um, going to get one question in with Leo, and then he's got to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, and that's fine because he's probably yeah. his patience is not going to be. How is Mrs. Dangle doing? She's doing great. Um, We were at the hospital parts of four days. Um, We arrived Saturday around noon, or at least she did. I had to join her after. Um, And uh, Leo was born 626, thank you, on Monday morning. Um, We, so the problem with Leo is he was a couple weeks early. Oh my goodness. He was a couple (laughs) weeks early and um, we didn't know how he was gonna happen and i won't get into the gory gory details but my wife was uh, preparing for a c-section mm-hmm. and so she hadn't bloody eaten 
and uh, then something happened, and we, uh, the nurses all at the very same moment were like, oh, actually, you're having the baby today, um, and it's going to be the old-fashioned way. So uh, then we did that. Um, I terrified all four grandparents because, um, oh, my goodness, because um, I kept giving them minute-by-minute minute updates, and then she got the epidural, and uh, they said to get, uh, you know, 40 winks you know get a quick nap in so went to sleep i woke up a bunch of times it was interrupted by the nurses here i think, oh, he's I think leo's hungry. done yeah i think it's time I love that's you, a good first appearance leo you're just a few <laughs> days old buddy oh, oh sorry. <laughs> there you go that is the youngest person ever to appear on this podcast yeah now. was leo better than nick kiprios whoa oh, wow well, at what close. Comment section. <laughs> <laughs> Who had oh, a better a appear? Yeah, as a guest host on the show. And make sure you know. tag Nick in your response. <laughs> so he goes, Who the hell is Leo and why are you messaging me? <laughs> Har harass Nick Kiprios until he gives me uh, free samples of that delicious looking drink he's trying to sell. Yeah. It does look really cool. It does. It does. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah. So sorry. I terrified all the grandparents because I'm giving them a play by play. And based on stories I had heard from other friends, she would get the epidural, we would fall asleep for a little while, she'd wake up, baby would be there in like five, 10 minutes, mm. which was not the case at all. Uh, to the point where one of the times where I woke up, I got woken up by the nurses, um, I noticed it was light out. And I went, oh no. And I looked down at my phone and went, oh no, because it was basically all, it was you guys too, I think. You just, what's happening? What's going on? Uh, I left all these people in the dark all night. Uh, my father-in-law is like, I left my notifications on for everything. Do you know how many emails and texts and stupid calls? And so I ruined everyone's night. Um, then uh, uh, she started pushing. She did three pushes, threw up on me, and nice. then did three more pushes and welcome Leo. He, wow. she, she pushed for 11 minutes. That's Did it. you save the throw up for Charlie to eat? Uh, uh, no, but luckily, Jesse, there's more where that came from. Awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So, no, so, and then the, so to answer your sorry, question, she, she's, she's recovered. She's she, recovering. She, her body went through it, right? Because oh. she had the empty stomach and then all those drugs. And then... Uh, and then obviously, you know, she gave birth to a kid. So did he, did he did he cry when he came out or was he quiet? Immediately. Really? Yeah, Immediately. we struggled with that with Everly. She didn't cry. Oh, really? So we were like, we were wondering what was going on. She was super drowsy. And so they're oh. like flicking her and like doing all these things oh, and flapping God. her arms around <laughs> and eventually got her to cry. And it was like, okay, whew. Because so they were worried, worried about that maybe she was deaf or like, you know, because that can happen, right? They just right. don't know. Right. Um, or, that, or she thought she was in a club and she's like, there's no crying in this club. Yeah, yo, <laughs> I even thought about that. And then um, if she did, it's like, why am I crying in the club right now? Right. Yeah. Like, she doesn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah man like it's it's uh now did you go did it go uh did leo go directly from sl to like an incubator table or into into skin to skin or how did you guys do it this is always uh, very interesting to me because yeah i had to go Black. right to the incubator like right right away. so did my sister yeah she uh no uh, no leo went straight to sl and uh but then very quickly after she's like, I'm going to throw up again. Mm -hmm. And so I <laughs> had to quickly <laughs> grab them off. I don't remember if, I don't think I took them. I think one of the nurses did. And then very shortly after they gave them to me, I think they poked them and prodded them a little bit, made sure everything was okay. All the color and everything. I cut the cord. Hey, I, cool. That's I, cool. I insisted on it. Um, Cause I, I read all these, uh, well, listen to, all these uh, new dad audio books. Um, and they, they were like, they were all basically like, <laughs> with, okay, listen, dads are, um, they're looked at differently today than they were, you know, not all that long ago where we were passengers in the whole thing. My father-in-law was joking with me. Apparently it's a, tra a tradition in Scotland. After you become a dad, you go out with all your buddies and get completely hammered. <laughs> like they take you out yeah, like it's a so stag. There was none of that in my house, that's for sure. Well, <laughs> yeah. Now the tradition is you record a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and do a video. <laughs> and, yeah. And get, you, get your YouTube video off. <laughs> I want to know about that. 
uh, when you're done all these questions, Adam, sure. can we get to the part where Steve, two days after the baby's born, you find a way to record a YouTube video? Well, he's a YouTuber, bro. He's got to get the content out there. Yeah. yeah. And I got to put 46 ads and talk yeah. about Dutch is alive. <laughs> Leo joins the group. My Whoa. baby is in Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> the, fourth, the fourth secret ending of GTA 5? <laughs> The Last of Us Part 8 featuring Leo? <laughs> the Last of Us Redemption? <laughs> so, Battlefront? Um, so then, yeah, so, what are we talking you, about? so you cut the cord, which is great. Um, how, okay, let me ask you this. This is my favorite part. What was the first bath like? Did he get his bath? Um, Do you remember that? No, they cleaned him off. They cleaned, uh, oh, you weren't there for it? The nurses clean him up. I don't know if he's had a proper bath yet. Because we had, the nurses did the same with us. So they moved us to another room and Everly had a ton of hair. So there was stuff in her hair. And so the oh. first time they put water on her, she went, <gasps> and, oh. and we got it on picture of her just going, like, I'm freezing. And then they had to comb the stuff out of her hair because she had so much. It was this big fro that she had. And oh. uh, um, I just loved the first bath because you get to see for the first time the reaction to that, like, you know, like when you jump in a lake too early in the spring and it's too yeah. cold. <laughs> See that reaction on a little baby and the reaction is the exact same as when you're like 30. For, newborns, for newborns, virtually everything sucks. Like yeah. the, the, the air is too cold. This diaper changing table is too cold. This kid has peed on me more times than he hasn't. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the table. Yeah. I, you have two seconds. Mm -hmm. You have two seconds and then, oh, God. Um, and <laughs> well, you got to try to cover with, him up without with getting girls, all over him, too. And... Not a problem with girls, though. Oh, Adam. <laughs> not a problem. Well, it's, it's a different problem with boys. Boys will pee on you because they pee like a stream. Girls, it just kind of leaks out it's the all, thing. So they, the diaper drops out the bottom. All. You're okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless you're carrying around naked to the shower, a shower or a bath and – then she's done that. But like, yeah, boys is like, I've heard that's like a sprinkler and, and you have to be very careful. Of that. Imagine Whenever, being in one direction. Wow. Whenever I see a newborn baby, I'm shocked that humans survive this long. Cause yeah. like you go back to like the ancient days and all the technology they didn't have. I'm sure I'm shocked that babies just survive. It must have taken so much care. Adam, you would know this. You're, you're our history corner guy. Like, uh, care it must have taken just by a community of people to keep babies alive. There's a book you should read called The Rational Optimist. Of course Optimist. there is. Uh, <laughs> there is. <laughs> really good. And it goes into explain that this guy, there's parts of it that I'm like, mm, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but a lot of it statistically is, and it talks about how, what would happen when you would have a family 100 years ago versus now or 120 years ago versus now. The book's probably 15 years old. And essentially, you know, people would have like 10 kids, but only four or five of them would make it to adulthood. Right. And so, and, and oftentimes women would, uh, uh, you know, the first mother would die somewhere through there because it's so much, as you've seen, Steve, can go wrong in a pregnancy. Uh, and all you need is one thing to go wrong. And and, um, you know, that's, and that happened all the time, even with the best physicians, yeah. like it happened to me. princesses and queens and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's pretty amazing that we've survived because our birth, the whole thing, like to think about like- It happened on Downton Abbey. Sorry, that's my- Did it? <laughs> well, there you go. It's like, you've got, uh, it's, you know, some like dogs, think about it. Like they, they're, they're pregnant for a couple months, they give birth. You know, they give birth to like nine right away. So, and then you can, you know, you raise them for six weeks and they're fine. Um, but like humans, it's like, well, I need to, I, I will be pregnant for this entire year and it will throw off my entire system for the year afterwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have the proper anesthetics and it's extremely painful. And also it's going to take uh, at least 14 years for this kid to reach maturity. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just, it's bizarre that we've survived. And if you it's leave really... it alone, it might die. Yeah. Like... Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So, so now Steve, then I guess the next question is, um, what was it like putting Leo in his car seat for the first time and knowing you're going to have to drive him home? Horrifying. Horrifying. I, well, first you're already all... a nanny driver. So, <laughs> Hey, Hey, all right. It's, it's uh, uh, it was, uh, so my wife sat in the back seat with him and she, so she's been, she's a very independent go get person. And she slowly lost her independence the 
deeper into pregnancy she got because like she, you just can't do it like we were going on walks every day and eventually she was you know she started with it wait up I did, uh, and then it got to the point where she's like this isn't worth it i can't do it i'm so sore um and then she's been a mom for 36 hours and she's like climbing over stuff into the back seat to try to get here let me clip this in here and get the kid in and mm-hmm. and uh so it was actually it was her that did all that but i i i took um three wrong turns on the way home it's a five minute drive oh steve a, little not five, i no not at all well, i was focused on the road for sure but like we had to go to the pharmacy first and i turned on to our street and nope not where we're going and so we went to the wrong pharmacy then and then <laughs> we finally went to the right one um i called i called leo luke like because that's our kids uh, that's our <laughs> friend's kid's name um wow, really out of it i was oh yeah tired. i was tired and my wife was tired and uh then we had last night and we're more tired yeah. but um yeah, we're really happy. This is well, that yeah, I can see that. It's going to get worse, the tired thing, before it gets I better. Know. Did you, that first night in the hospital, did you let Mrs. Daniel sleep? Like, were you up with Leo at all? Um, it was really hard. Because, okay, so I got to say, having a kid in the hospital is not glamorous as it is. Having a kid in the hospital during COVID sucks. Oh, oh I can't imagine. Um, well, and like, you got you to gotta wear a mask in, in the halls um most of the nurses were pretty chill but they all had masks on and you know it, it's difficult because you're just talking to different different hats and mascara because you can't see their face yeah right? so, so you're i th- i think that's jennifer but i'm not i'm not totally sure i, th- I think that's lucille um and one of them like insisted like when she's in the room she's like can you please wear a mask and we're like okay okay geez so every time she comes in we we put the mask on and everything but um, uh, he had to get blood sugar tests. Okay. Every, oh God, I don't know, three hours, something mm-hmm. like that. So they prick his heel. Mm-hmm. He freaks out every time. And Aww. there's no dad duty there. Like no. there's no, here, here, honey, I'll get this. It's the whole room's up. Yeah. Right. So uh, that was tough. But he, you should have seen me. So he failed his first test. He had to get a certain score and he just failed it. Passed his second one. Fails the third one, which means we got to start over. So, you know, nails, nails, nails the fourth one, nails the fifth one, and like I'm literally like, like, like I'm standing, like I'm like an an, an addict standing at a slot machine in Vegas, going, "Come on, come on, baby!" And he got the proper score, and I go, "Yes!" Like I've never, <laughs> like literally a fist bump. Like I've never celebrated a goal like that. Come on, Leo! Yeah. <laughs> Like you scored a goal in soccer, get in. Um, so he, um, that's uh, I don't remember your original. Question. Well, it, no, it doesn't matter. That's okay. Doesn't matter at all. He, uh, yeah, I mean, so I remember the first that first night in the hospital. I was trying to because we she Caprice gave birth I think around eleven o'clock at night, and then we weren't done the bath and everything until probably two a.m. So she she had been induced and we she had been having um labor pains all day so you're you know you're you're at the hospital at, at 8 a.m she's in the bed by 8 30 and hanging out there until 10 o'clock at night so we were pretty tired and so we both sort of snoozed in the bed but um uh i remember uh caprice like like saying like listen if the, if everly cries we're gonna need to I, i'm gonna need you to get up because i need to catch some sleep so it was just me and like three other dads every couple hours walking down the hallway trying to you know coax the baby back to sleep and I was so tired that like I sat down and almost did the like it was sort of one of those and I and I was like okay I have to stand up and I like put a podcast on and just kind of shuffled down the hallway and there was like a a train of dads just doing the doing the laps and I was dying to do that Adam and I and you can't you can't do that. You can't wander oh, the halls. That's crazy. Right? Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Uh, but like, I'm lucky. Like, they eased restrictions. Like, I was keeping track because, like, when this all started popping off in March, there was that one idiot in Quebec who uh, it was a it was an expectant dad who had symptoms and lied 
And then it turns out he had it and he almost screwed it up for everybody where dads weren't going to be allowed in. Um, so I was naturally pretty pissed about that. Um, but they ended up letting me in. Then the policy was like, you can only go to your car once. And so I had to go and I'm like, Oh, better make it a good one. Mm -hmm. But uh, we actually, we forgot something very vital at home. So they let me go home while she was still in labor and I came, uh, came back with plenty of time, luckily. Um, but (laughs) yeah, there was, Oh, (laughs) believe me, it, it occurred to me, Jesse, as I'm trying (laughs) desperately to do no more than five over the speed limit, um, you know, residential neighborhood and all that. Um, that's but you that, normally. Just, that is, yeah, that is you normally. Yeah. Listen, you're not listen. you're not really on the move anytime. No. That's why we never take your car anywhere. Listen, all right. <laughs> For car pulling, it's me. Ten and two. <laughs> Ten and two. All right. <laughs> Ten and two. We like everybody. to get there somewhat in this in this century. So <laughs> <laughs> Ten and two, kids. Don't listen to him. He's a delinquent. Um, so um, so you get home and mm-hmm. last night, how, tell us about last night. How'd it go? Well, so the first night's a big night. First couple nights are big nights. Mm-hmm. First night, so it, Tuesday night is or Monday they're night. They're still at the hospital. Tuesday night. Monday night is the first Monday. night and we're still at the hospital. Yesterday. Oh, Tuesday night, night is yeah. last night and we were home. So we got home oh. around three or four. Um, and uh, so we're allowed in Ontario, we're allowed a 10 person bubble, which is basically just our uh, immediate family. So uh, the in-laws came over. Um, both oh, of SL's God. parents and uh, her. You had them on the first day. And his fiance. Yeah. God bless you. Oh my God. Yeah, we did. <laughs> well, they, Out of my they love your reaction. We didn't. <laughs> yeah. They were, That's a lot, man. <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? Though it's because we were so cooped up in the room. Oh yeah. It really right. made it feel like there was no outside world, and it was kind of demoralizing, and like kind of made it scary. And then being in the house. Okay, you relax a little bit. I recognize this place, and then familiar people, and then you know very quickly it's like, all right, I love you. Now leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but no, like not now leave. But no, it was also like the first time I'd actually gotten to like, you know, hug a person who was <laughs> not my wife, you know, uh, in in quite some time. Um, and then my parents came over today, and Rachel, Auntie Rachel. It didn't occur to me until today that uh, she's Rachel an aunt. Aunt, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it yeah. might, we had it at the hospital where, um, cause we were there two nights. So, cause we were there so late one night that it was like, it didn't make sense to, to not be. And they wanted obviously to keep us there for an extra night. So we had our parents come in, um, separately and everybody got an hour. So my Caprice is from a divorce home. I'm from a divorce home. So everybody got there a lot an hour. And then uh, after that four hour period was up, we were exhausted like it was <laughs> and the thing is though the great thing about having your parents over in that first week first couple weeks is they'll take the baby and you can go sleep and have a shower and yeah whoa that is amazing <laughs> that's that's what's gonna start happening we've made both sets of parents very aware we are taking advantage of you yes you are coming over and they want that you're bringing food pre-made <laughs> and and you are watching this kid while i sleep for 45 minutes please for the love of god yeah yeah. yeah, it's. I'm. I'm very tired, but like we're learning more about Leo all the time. Um, we're getting better at changing diapers. We're getting better at soothing him, knowing what's a fake cry, what's a real cry, mm-hmm. uh, what's a I'm hungry cry, what's a I just poop myself cry, um, all that. And thank God we're home now too because the. Um, the uh the what the hell do they call them the sleep sacks oh you, yeah you put your feet their feet in you put the thing over and then it's velcro it's a bit basically to swaddle them yeah tight in the hospital it's just blankets yep. and the nurses are trying to show you how to how to do it and it's like getting taught the piano by beethoven right like it's, right. <laughs> it sounds yeah. you know or gretzky teach uh coaching the coyotes it sounds great in practice but then you know, you realize he's going simply be the best player ever. Yeah. Right. Um, and the nurses are just unbelievable at what they do. And SL and I were just like, yeah, no. Yeah, no, those <laughs> are key. And the, as they get older, the zip up ones are great. Like I put Everly in sleep sacks still because what happens is they kick off their blankets. Yeah. And so like, cause Jesse, what happens is when they're young, mm-hmm. you have to put them in little gloves because their nails are very long and you can't cut them. Mm-hmm. and they also smack themselves in the face because they have no control over their arms. So they'll wake themselves up, and they'll go, bam, 
and the then they'll start crying. Crazy. Yeah, the reflex is nuts. So you, you have to keep them swaddled so uh-huh. that they won't wake themselves up and be tired and exhausted and, and, and that sort of thing. And then as they get older, they move around, they roll around like Everly's doing, and they kick that stuff off. So they'll wake up earlier. But if you have them in a sleep sack that zip up, they're, they're warm all the time and they stay asleep, which is great because you this need is, as much sleep as you can get. So this is Leo's third day of born on this earth. And I held him a certain way he didn't like. And he literally went like this and grabbed onto my arm with both his hands. Wow. I yeah. Like, How old is like, is this the Will Ferrell thing? Oh, <laughs> God, it's hot in there. If he wasn't so tiny, I would have thought he was a little bit old. Steve, yes. I still want to know how on the third day of Leo being on planet Earth, you found a way to record and edit a YouTube video that's over 10 minutes long. Well, that was was last night, actually. So it was his, I think it was technically his second day. (laughs) (laughs) All right. This is the third day. This This is the third third day. day. And now I'm doing a podcast. No, but it's to get it out of the way. And and, and my wife wife and I talked about this far in advance. Mm -hmm. I told her, listen, I want to, this has got to happen. And she goes, Nope, I totally get it. Um, and also like our plans changed aggressively because of Leo, right? Like I was working really hard to put videos in the vault for uh, the Sportsnet YouTube channel. I was working on seven videos that I was going to put in the vault for mine. Haven't started. Uh, all I've done is the notes and prep. Um, and I'm not going to make those videos right now, but no, I wanted, um, because I'd kept it a secret, um well now the kid's born and they're here and i'm bursting like i want to tell everyone so got to make the video it actually even though it was about the same length as most of my videos it didn't take nearly as much time it wasn't nearly as many clips um and then this show i think is only gonna be an hour or whatever and like uh you know you can you can if if you're doing it from home you can duck out for an hour or two it's (laughs) it's as if i'm going for a nap but instead i'm just spending a lot of energy which is, it sounds like a smart thing to do. Um, but no, I, I, I want to let the world in on the thing I've wanted to let them in on for uh, well, and, weeks. And let me ask you, why did you decide to keep it a secret? Well, I, I got into it in the video, but, um, you know, we struggled. We struggled really hard to uh, get pregnant. And, uh, and um, yeah, we started right around when the Leafs won the first overall pick in the draft lottery in 2016. And, uh, you know, we were really happy as, as one is. And we're like, Hey, how about that thing? Um, and you think it's going to be easy. Uh, I blame Catholic school personally for making me feel like looking at a girl got her pregnant. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, I, I even, this is the dumbest thing, but, uh, we were on a beach in california on our honeymoon this is 2014 and you know i said this quietly obviously i didn't shout it but i'm like listen look around you no no one here knows who we are there's no friends or family here when when do you want to start having kids and we we talked it out and that's that's what we figured we yeah we'll we'll wait a couple years we'll start trying uh, spring 2016 and like to the point where I'm like yeah that way they'll be born early 2017 like we're trying to plan down to the month to like d- to give them an advantage over their peers like yeah if they have an early birthday maybe they'll do better in school <laughs> yeah the, the Malcolm Gladwell you read one thing. Malcolm Gladwell yeah. book and all of a sudden you're a scientist yeah. well, <laughs> J- Jesse I didn't even read the book I just pulled that out of my ass it would have been better if I had read it in the book you know uh yeah. So, you know, and it doesn't work that way. And, you know, I talked to you guys about this. Like it's, it's the main reason I started going into therapy because it shakes you. It shakes you to your core. You know, some people handle it really well and others really, really struggle. Um, And, you know, I wanted, I wanted to like sort of say that from the male's perspective, because I feel like women kind of carry the burden of, of, how do I say this? Like basically talking about their feelings Mm -hmm. and, you know, especially when it comes to infertility. So, you know, and I didn't want to say it in like a chastising or scolding way. Um, And people never do it um, out of, out of malice. They just, they want to know, Hey, when are you, when are you going to have kids? You know? And all, all I wanted to say was stop it, stop it. 
I think that's not I a think question you should, you should just ask say anyone. It, say it point blank. That's not any a question anybody should ask, like you just said, Adam. It's not a, not a Never question. ask somebody that. Yeah. You don't know what they're going through. Yeah, you don't know what they're going through. And they might be pregnant as you're speaking to them. It's still, you know, but you, you don't know because they haven't told you, which means it's none of your business, right? So, and and... And but when you are going through that, when you are going through the the struggles, and someone asks you that, it hurts, right? And it pisses you off. And then you talk about it in the car after, like, fuck it. Like I really wish they hadn't. Um. And uh, yeah, we dealt with that for years. And uh, some days you guys saw it was really friggin' hard, and other days it was fine. But you know, it, it sort of really, really started to weigh on us, especially. And we had. Uh, stopped expecting it and sort of kind of lost hope. And then uh, right before the Halloween episode of ice surfing, which I know Adam watched the morning after, of course um, I'm dressed up like Harry Potter uh, at work. And I just got the best news of my life. And that was the easiest show I've ever done. Like just because (laughs) I, I had that in me, right. I'm surprised. I'd like to go back and watch that show and see if I misspoke at all, because I was thinking about, uh, everything but hockey. Mm. I don't remember the score of any of the games. I think the Leafs won, but if they lost, I didn't care. You know what I mean? I wouldn't, uh, dude. You I didn't, shouldn't I, remember a game from October, <laughs> anyways. Jesse, like, regardless I, of what happens, <laughs> I remember all life events based on Leaf games. Okay, <laughs> the the day the day of the twelve week ultrasound where we started telling everyone the Leafs beat the Hurricanes eight six. It was the next generation game. The day I asked my wife's father for her hand in marriage, the Leafs played the New York Islanders and Dion Phaneuf scored the overtime winner five, four Nazem Kadri, I believe had a hat. I'm trick. upset. This is upsetting. Only, might have only yeah, had I don't two. like this. this is, Steve, this is upsetting. <laughs> Jesse, you want to talk about upsetting the Leafs were up four, two in that game. It shouldn't have even gone to overtime. I don't wow. know. <laughs> <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> Sir, how is your brain wired? Because I'm confused. It's well, all of it's coming undone. Mm. Very I, well yeah and it will it will the next three months are gonna go by so fast but the you know what i'll say this a lot of people did the Ma- malcolm gladwell thing where they tried to have kids in january like tried to time it for january so they a have a leg up yeah that's what they yeah. do so it's essentially it's because you're you're the most developed in your class you're the eldest in your class so you're six months ahead or a year ahead in some cases of other kids your grades are better you're better at sports your confidence is higher all those things there's a mm. there's a, i mean it's a pretty good argument um but what ended up happening with that by the way is there especially in toronto i don't know if this happened in other cities but in toronto a bunch of people like tried to hold their kids back so maybe yeah. they're in one year and they're like well he's within two weeks of the next year so why don't we just hold him back for the next year and it's like just put him in school he'll be fine yeah. they uh, have like a hard date for the either side of the class you're on they'd be like well he's on this side but it's only a couple days so like let's put him in this grade it's yeah like, no there's a hard date for it yeah, yeah. i <laughs> like i i met a friend um they had their kid at 29 weeks which is very premature tiniest baby i've ever seen and then i saw the kid at two years old huge yeah. like big for a two-year-old yeah. Um, you know who was born at 28 weeks? Nick Robertson. Oh, wow. There you yep. go. That kid, man, four weeks later than my sister. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't know why I ever thought, yes, yeah, so January or February, baby. Like to the point where I was like, let's aim for February just in case they're a little early because then, you know, they might show up in December. Like that's how misinformed i was on how this all worked and this this you know to be honest mrs dangle was supposed to give birth first week in july yeah uh, so it was going to work out perfectly it was going to be playoffs were finished stanley cup yeah, yeah. draft would have been today i think and then free agency would have been like next wednesday and then that would have been it and you guys would have been setting off and ready to go and uh and it's good that the season well, it's not good, but it's it worked out fortuitously that there's been no season, especially in the third trimester when um, your wife needs you the most, right? The second, like yeah. the first one, they're sick, like they're feeling off. The second one, it's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm oh. not pregnant. I can't even feel it. And then the third one, it's like, I hate this. Please end this now. I was I was like barbecuing in, in December because she could not handle the smell of meat. Really? Couldn't oh. cook meat in the house. Um, no, she couldn't do it. 
Yeah. Couldn't do it. Um, it's funny what it does to the, even your body odor sometimes, like they'll go from loving your body odor to just hating it. Absolutely can't stand your smell. So Iggy, we're pretty sure knew yeah? most of the time she was pregnant. Charlie, I have no idea. You can't read him. He eats his own poop. But um, <laughs> Charlie's brain is half poop. Let's Charlie, be it really is. He's just happy and living. He's, nice He's made of love and poop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, um, oh, God. Oh. Yeah, he would sniff her tummy, but Iggy would like nuzzle with it. And like, it's to the point where, um, uh, you know, spooning is where the guys at the back, we would, we would do jet pack. We like jet pack where she's my jet pack. Uh, th- th- <laughs> is that what it's called? That's yeah. My friend jet Nate taught me that. I jet love pack. that. I like that. Um, what? and, uh, to the point where the baby, like I could feel the baby kicking me in the back while really? he was still. Yeah. So Iggy would like, he spent most of the day just nuzzled on her. And I'm like, there's no way he doesn't feel that. Like, does he think she has indigestion or something? I guess uh, tomorrow or Saturday we'll find out because he's still at the in-laws. Um, and then, then life really begins because, uh, you know, it's hard enough the way it is right now. And then I have to do everything climbing over two 80 pound dogs. So <laughs> two dogs and a baby, it's two dogs life. and a baby. Oh, I am the fifth most important person in this yeah. house <laughs> how Fine. are the dogs how are the dogs uh, doing with it and he, did uh, they notice her so my brother-in-law sent me a video of them we we sent home two blankets from the hospital mm-hmm. and they sniffed them like crazy they oh, could good. tell something was up like they seemed really excited tails wagging um and they like babies you know they can lick them charlie mm-hmm. will check his will we'll check his teeth first uh <laughs> yeah it's good don't please don't lick poop all over my baby charlie um yeah i can't wait i can't wait till they're introduced yeah it's cool it's cool well then you then they are then all of a sudden they're they're like moving around on the carpet and stuff like that and they're going after the dogs and the dogs are like please god leave me alone because they because <laughs> babies don't pet they grab and they poke and they right grab on the face a lot yeah they grab the jowls and they're like you especially the long face hair that Iggy and Charlie have, Iggy yeah. especially, all our friends' kids, they just go, yeah, <laughs> they just latch right on. Yeah. yeah, but they deal with it. They're yeah, they're patient. Um, that's that's really good, man. And, and so um, now, are, are you like, are you feeling like on the tired scale? Because it's going to get worse before it gets better, right? Mm-hmm. So how are you doing with that? I'm fluctuating. I'm fluctuating between, hey, I actually feel pretty good and virtually asleep. Right. Like, like, like I said, I've called my son the wrong name. Um, <laughs> like, I, I've been asked to, and th- this was the thing you told me, Adam, is take, take a ton of pictures. And yes, I have been. And must. like yesterday, I had to recall like, hey, so what have the last few days been like? And I'm like, uh, and it's, it's one of those situations where if you don't sleep, for a few straight days. Like it's easy. Uh, you know, your brain makes memories when you sleep and Mm -hmm. the morning and night, and it helps you recall things. Those four days were one big day. And if I had to tell you what happened on what day, the easiest indicator wasn't morning or night. It was, was Leo alive or not? (laughs) Like, was he born? Um, so I'm, I'm wiped, but I think, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm figuring this out. The problem is, besides uh, Leo um, getting up all the time and screaming, is uh, I'm a hover dad. So th- there have been lots of lots of cases where he's asleep. Like everyone's texting me, "When the baby sleeps, you sleep." That's how you do it. And I'm like, "Totally. How? How do you do that?" Because I'm just constantly when when he's making noise, he's awake, but I have to tend to him. When he's not making noise. Oh my God, what the hell's wrong? And I'm literally just like standing over him like this, making sure he's still breathing. Um, but like, he's, he's not going anywhere. So mm-hmm. hopefully he's good. he's good. Yeah. I need to, I just need to convince myself. He's fine. Mm-hmm. He's fine. Go to bed. That'll take time. You'll take time with that. It's, it, it's, that's natural. But like the thing it's is, hard. is that remember you're, they, there's a human being in your care. It's, it's weird. It's weird, man. And so believe me, I, I understandable. I had a private moment in the hospital. I was in the elevator for some reason. Um, and I was just alone. And I thought to myself, you know, I was like mid sentence 
in my head. And I said, well, I'm a parent now. And I just went, <laughs> mm. like out loud. I was like, oh, I'm a parent now. I am mm. a dad. I am a father. Those are all sentences that are true. Isn't that wild? Here's one. My son is upstairs. What? That's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> That's, That's a fun. silly thing to say. How is that possible? My son is upstairs? Oh, because I have a son. Ah, because I'm a dad. It's going to yeah. take me a little bit, of, a little bit of time. <laughs> now that you're yeah. a parent, I'm going to have to get used to it. Well, it's like, it's like your 18th birthday. You're like, okay, I'm an adult now. Yeah. And it's the same as yesterday. You know, like I don't feel much different than I did a week ago. I just feel more tired. You know, it's um, the one, the one thing. So Dave, David Amber, told me to get this book called the new father and if any of you are expecting i highly recommend it um but one of the things he really drove home was it's not this or it's not always anyway this euphoric ah like magical moment where you instantly fall in love with the kid and oh they're the most cute little angel leo's a cute kid right now but when the when the kid comes out there's all these instant worries. Uh, are they, are they crying? Do they have jaundice? Are they, are they, you know, breathing is all the, all those things. And when a, when a newborn baby comes out, um, it's said in the book and I had forgotten in the moment. And I wish I like went over that quickly while she was in labor. They look like they've been beat up. Like yeah. they look swollen. Um, and you forget that it's actually a really physically exhausting thing for the kid uh as well and uh i don't remember where i was going with all well this. your this bond, is another thing my sentences that, don't go anywhere that book you were talking about like the <laughs> bond that you form um you almost look back at the the pictures later and go like oh my god mm -hmm. because when you're in it you're it's almost like you're not, not going to war but like it's like you're in the trenches you're like all right let's just get through the next 10 minutes actually and so to, you don't have time to sit back and stop and go i really love this thing it's like let's just keep this alive and okay yours it's your responsibility now and now now it's mine you just reminded me i've taken a bunch of pictures of me with leo of my wife with leo we don't have one together with him yet you must get one i know Aww, we yeah. we have to we just keep forgetting because it's all been focused on her recovery and his recovery and keeping him alive. So it hasn't exactly been top priority, um, the photos, but I'm definitely trying. Sorry, I, I started a thought much earlier in the episode and I'll finish it. The Part of the reason they say to cut the cord uh, for dads is it helps build your confidence as a father. And it's like, it's an immediate thing you can do if you're able to, you're not able to in all scenarios, but if you're able to do it, it's an immediate simple easy thing you can do to be involved in your child's birth mm -hmm. right and oh the cord is disgusting by the way it's actually really difficult to cut it smells uh, it after literally a with scissors yes kind of it I was did like, it too. they're like medical yeah it's they're uh, you, you, and it, they're not sharp it's like they kind of like gnaw at it it's like it's, it's like disgusting. rusty scissors well they're not rusty but they're not they're like they're like and those they go, cheap scissors. Eee! Yeah, and they're like the, they, and then you have to like kind of clamp down on it to, and then they clip, and then they they, and I, I think Leo's probably got this too, right, Steve? They got the clip on the belly button. Still, yeah. And that so that in a few days, that's really gonna stink, and then eventually it just kind of falls off. How long is uh, it? Uh, about a week, week and a half. It dries oh, out. Okay. It dries out, and then it just kind of right. falls off. We're but, getting there. Um, We're getting it, it's like it smells. <laughs> it it's is gross. Like you think their poo smells. That smells. That but really smells. The the. That was, I hope the, no one's eating. I know. Well, it's well. not even the grossest thing we've talked about on the show. <laughs> no. Um, you know, we talk about the Leafs all the time. Whatever. Uh, we all had this happen. If you can't handle this, you're, you're yeah. like having children. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. have a little, little, little conversation about an umbilical cord. You're going to have real trouble in the delivery room. It's best to hear it now, son yeah. Jim. It's best to hear it now. Um, but it's, it's something you can <laughs> the do. The two of you need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> There's grizzled old dads. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, handle it. Get out. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. You say that now, Jesse, the episode that it happens for you, you're going to be like, you are my, my darling friends and I love you. Thank you for your guidance. Yes. I, I appreciate this so much. Yeah, but right now I can point out how ridiculous the two of you are. Well, oh, absolutely. Just wait, my friend, you <laughs> just wait. I can't wait for that episode. But uh, the, I, know the, that's, I know it's a long way off, but I'm very excited for it anyway. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> or maybe the, not. 
the book no. emphasizes yeah see i just hey jesse when are you, when gonna, are you gonna have kids no hey, you, you banging <laughs> hey you guys having that some of that sex you practicing that's what i was i look at it. it's good practice oh no right? you practice for the real thing is it both regular and scheduled <laughs> like that's basically calendar? what it's basically what you're asking people mm -hmm. um so knock it off but no like uh cutting the cord it's it's basically to to get men involved because or or the husband or whatever whoever it is whoever the, whoever the person is who's not having a kid um giving birth um it gets you involved because it used to just be you know oh dad's in the waiting room and he's having a smoke and he doesn't even know how many kids it is i saw a picture of a dad um they bring him to like that little room where they used to keep babies and all that from like bugs bunny cartoons and he fainted because he found out there were triplets oh geez. now you can find out boy or girl you can find out like certain conditions mm -hmm. um things like that it used to be you didn't know not only boy or girl you didn't know how many kids there were until they were born that's yep. insane uh, um but it basically instead of you being a passenger parent you know, ah, oh, you just the bread went on. You go to work the next day or later that day. You know, it's you actually get involved in the process and help, you know, raise the kid. My dad was mentioning that he said his back in the day, I think it was his grandfather. And my dad is actually sitting next to me off camera right now. So he might be able to correct me. I'll oh, no get it wrong. But, hey, uh, get the way to hold on. <laughs> but, Can we bring on your dad? <laughs> if you want to. Uh, but he said to me that... Um, you know, his grandfather would not have picked up any of his own children when they were babies. Like it just didn't, it just wasn't done. That was for women and men didn't do that. So a lot of times men didn't have in that generation, a connection with their child until they were six or seven years old wow. because they weren't moving and animated and talking. That was, those were the years that they spent with the women. And then now we're going to teach them how to be men or teach them how to, you know what I mean? Like it's very, it's very weird. And if actually, not to get too history on you guys, but if you go back and you look at the way Victorians raise their kids, it's very much like that. And it's very, it's very odd. The roles were very specific. And if you broke that, you were weird. And like, if you were aristocracy and you actually loved your wife and paid attention to your kid, then you were considered like a pansy. Like, Oh, what, what kind of a loser? What kind of a loser loves his wife and doesn't cheat on her with three other people. And there's like, still, it's crazy. We, we've evolved, but like, there's, there's still that there was this great Reddit thread and I showed it to my wife. It was actually the day before, uh, she ended up going to the hospital. It was, hey guys, what are what's a thing guys should do that is that you in your friend group or society had previously stigmatized as effeminate? And the things on the list are absolutely ridiculous. Like the things that guys peer pressure other guys into not doing, having cocktails, um, uh, like literally like hygiene, like basic hygiene. Um, I remember one for me is uh, like when, when I was in university, I wouldn't drink wine. Guys really? don't drink wine unless they're old. Am I right, boys? High five. Stupid. <laughs> so yeah. stupid. And you missed out on all that great wine. Yeah. Fellas, is it lame to, uh, you know, help the burden of raising a kid with your wife? Or like, should you just like let her suffer? And wake up every single time. Yeah. I don't know. Like, is it, it's just me. <laughs> did, did you hear about Larry? How he like helps his wife? What a jerk off. Yeah, like that's, yeah. <laughs> I was at, uh, um, when I was working on BT, I was, I did a, uh, remember when Molson Canadian had that ice rink on top of the skyscraper? Yeah, I was on it. it. You guys yeah. were both there. Yeah. So I, I got to do it that morning and Steve was later that afternoon, I think. And so anyway, I was skating with one of the, the teams that was on there. And a guy had two kids or something like that. And I said, I don't know how you do it, especially in early mornings like this. He's like, oh, they don't need you for the first two years anyway. And now being a dad, not, not that I ever believed that, but now being a dad, I'm like, that is very not true. <laughs> like extremely oh, yeah. not true. I can't believe that that was his attitude. But That's he bad really parents. Are. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. This guy, this guy his no wife was, must have been a saint. I can't imagine. Oh. This guy I know has four kids. He goes, you know what they don't tell you is the first six months are they're act, babies are actually really boring. <laughs> they are. <laughs> I mean, sure, sounds like a bit of a harsh word to use, but maybe by kid four, I'll say the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just it's it's, not I'm even, learning a lot. <laughs> it's not even hard work 
in the first six months beyond being tired. It's, you know, given, okay, if you, if you have a healthy baby, you know, if you've got a baby with health issues, it's a completely different set of circumstances. Of course. Of but course. assuming that the baby is healthy, it's not that it's hard work. It's just a lot. There's just a lot to do. And, uh, you know, it, it starts to get hard as they get older and their cognitive skills get better. And then they start to, you know, talk back or like yesterday I turned my back for one second and Everly grabbed the bar cart and started shaking the bar cart I have in my living room. And I was like, that is not what we're going to do. Uh, <laughs> and I, I said, Everly, no. And she looked at me and she smiled and then she went back to shaking the bar cart. And I was like, yeah. like no, we're not. So I had to like, cause she doesn't really know. She doesn't really know English, but she knows she wants to shake that bar cart. And That's so right. And she's now starting to shake her head no. Like, so when she doesn't want food, she goes. Mm -hmm. And then, we, so we're like, damn it, she learned no first. So we're trying to teach her yes. So she'll sometimes do that. Oh. But it's like, you know, that's when it starts <laughs> to get involved, right? Because you're, but, you know, I remember having Everly like on my knee and then my computer like up here, like I have it right now. And she would just fall asleep on my knee and I would do my show prep and get ready to go to bed for but there's no way that's happening now. Right. So they get, it's, it's just a lot. There's a barrage of stuff at the beginning. And then as soon as you think you've got it all, well, we got a routine, we're good. Then they start teething. Then they start wanting to sit up, you know, and then they start bopping around the house and like, and, and Everly has a, she scoots, right. She doesn't do the, she doesn't crawl. So, and they're gone in a heartbeat and you're chasing them. So I can't wait for that for you. I think, I think the next three months are just going to be a blur. You're not going to remember any of it. Yeah. Take as much as you can. And you know, can if I make a suggestion, write down the events of what happened at the hospital. That's a good write idea. it down. Write it down in as much detail as you possibly can. I did that and I look back sometimes and I go, I would never have remembered that. So write it down in as much detail as you can. And one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten, uh, and this happened <laughs> about a month ago, so I've done this. Start an email account in Leo's name and start every picture you take. Every major event, you send, your, you send Leo an email, and then when he's 18, you give him the password. Wow. And so you've oh, got an entire timeline of events. That's so I, cool. So I missed the first year, but I'm doing that with Everly now. So I'm starting with her first birthday and just going to send her stuff. And you give it to friends and family and stuff too, and they can, they can say or they can give you like they can write stuff down and give you like an account of how a day went with, with Everly and stuff. So they get, you know, they get that when they're older. It's kind of neat. That's a great idea. Make sure to great, send a link to I, this podcast. I got a shout out. To, uh, Phil Phil Westlake was the guy I believe that oh, uh, yeah, sent that to Phil. Yeah, we love it was Phil. Phil. It was hey, Phil that said that. I was messaging him uh, today. Yeah, he's a good. Ah, uh, Phil's the best. Yeah, he's a wicked dude. Yeah. We um, I got. Uh, <laughs> I would love to read a newspaper. My parents didn't do this, but I would love to read a newspaper from March twelfth, nineteen eighty eight, when I was born, because I was that was one of the things in the book. It's like, oh, you. You Keep should get a newspaper. newspaper from that day. So my dad did that. Yeah. My kid is going to be going, what the f oh, are you serious? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like I was trying to not be on my phone as much, but holy shit. What a week. Your child <laughs> what might a four have been born. Your child might have been born in the most newsworthy week she'll ever see in her entire life. And if we're wow. lucky, I hope that's, that's the case. <laughs> Just the amount of crap right now is terrible. I, I, <laughs> I hope it goes like this is the peak and then it kind of calms down from here. It's a, yeah. Uh, who's Bubba Wallace? Why is Mel Gibson trending? Mm -hmm. What's it? What, I, I haven't heard Tulsa this much in God knows. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what is a K-pop stand? <laughs> <laughs> oh tiktok kids yeah the tiktok kids and yeah. how and their impact on the election i'm like what a that sentence five years ago is not a thing no no like it's no, no. musically no. did not have the same impact as tiktok it's funny how you guys almost accidentally planned it for the exact perfect time for your schedule it was supposed to be as soon as the off season starts and hockey takes a break, SL was going to give birth. And then you'd have two free solid months to do whatever you want and just take care of the baby. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the pregnancy, a global pandemic happens and all of that is pushed. They're here. You know what I mean? Like, believe yeah. me, I, I've, I've had the thought has occurred to me, Jesse, where, <laughs> yeah. damn it, this was perfect and it was robbed for me, but they're here. Leo's here, so yep. that's, that's I just the got a one. I got a Sportsnet update. Um, multiple Blue Jays players and staff members have tested positive for COVID nineteen in Florida. <laughs> They've been well, there for a day. And here's the other thing, guys. Like, so 
I've I've already had the conversation with with SL. Like, listen, hockey's going to start back up in about a month, maybe. Since since he's come early, it's uh, about five or six weeks. So you know, I work in hockey for crying out loud. You know, hopefully, we'll be well established at home by then. You will be, and, You'll and have I'll it still on- be, I'll still be home, but I'll be working. Yep. So, like, I'll need to get back into a work schedule. Man, from everything I read in the hospital, folks, there's not going to be sports this summer. Like, I Andrew, think bro. you're, I think you're completely off on that one. Yeah, you're I would wrong. Not disagree more. Like, you think you're I wrong? Know. No, I know there will be sports, and it will be very soon. It will yeah. be within four weeks. Next week on uh, July, I think it's third. The MLS is coming back with their World Cup style tournament. That's happening. Like yeah. the, no matter how many positive there. tests we have between now and next week, that's happening. And I think all the other sports are happening too. And they're gonna. You got to remember. Okay, Maybe. so you got to remember the the. And I understand why people are calling for the season to be canceled. I get it. Um, and people are like, well, I mean, these sports leagues—they're clearly only bringing it back for the money. They were only ever there for the money in the first place. I'm not really sure what illusion you were harboring, uh, but this has only ever been for the money. No, NFL (laughs) is not for profit. Yeah, that's right. They were for profit. They were not for profit for a long time. They weren't anymore. But you know, like now they pay taxes. So if you are saying that the NHL, the NFL, the NBA, MLB, they're all well, they're just doing it for the money. Yeah. Yeah. That's been the No, I get it. Um, and and so when you bubble, when you Pick your bubble cities. I can't believe that they've taken this long trying to pick their bubble cities. Um, they're going to, and they were. I think MLSE uh, put out a plan today that they would cordon off all of Exhibition Place, um, and certain games would be played out of uh, Coca Cola Coliseum. Others would be they'd be busing them to um, uh, the uh, Scotiabank Arena. But that would be because there's a hotel there. Oh, this there's an Toronto. event center there. So it would be the players, and that would be a campus. No one leaves. No one comes. All the food's there. All the people, like, they'd have cooks. They'd have every, everything catered, everything taken care of all the time. So the players would just live in that block of the city, and that's what it would be. That's what it's going to take for sports to come back. But there's that much money on the line where something like that makes sense. And that's where, like, right now players are testing positive in the MLB because they're not in a bubble, right? This like is- the, and, and, think, and NHL players sorry. are not in a bubble. The NBA guys are all cordoned off in Disney World right now. Not Nobody's yet. No, no. Oh, there will no, be. They're not there I, yet. Yeah, they will. I kind of have a feeling hockey is the most likely to come back and have and it the not NFL be a, will be back in the fall. and not be a catastrophe. Yeah, but aren't there like yeah. entire football teams that have it or something? There was like a college twenty-three team. players in the Clemson team uh, got COVID nineteen, but I think twenty out of the twentieth or something never showed symptoms. So they had very mild cases and they'll all recover. So yeah. I think yeah. that's, that's when we hear these cases, I think that's what a lot of it's going to be. It's these guys are going to get it. And then 14 days later, it's not necessarily they'll be fine, but they'll recover from it. Yeah. Right. A lot of it. And it, yeah. and how the leagues want to deal with that is, do you want to come back and play? How do you want to do that? How do you want to handle this? But th- those are the decisions. It's not, Hey, a guy gets it and we shut it down. Right. We're, we're too far past that. Yeah. It's and, man. And, I watched clips of uh, live reactions to Rudy Gobert getting it from just a few months ago. And honestly, it's like, it's like, it's like watching a clip of Letterman from the nineties. Like it's just, it's ancient. It's ancient. Um, it, the world has changed. It has. And mm-hmm. I think we have to learn how to live within it. And you have to understand that there are going to be positive cases. So this whole idea that there's going to be perfection in this, I think, is an impossibility. You can't – the leagues are never going to come out and say that. But to say that somebody's not going to test positive for, for this, it's going to happen. I think it is going to happen. And, and I think, not just someone, like star athletes. The guys part of the, yeah. biggest part of the, the whole team. thing – oh, yeah, star athletes. For sure, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But part of, the, part of the thing you got to keep in mind here, too, and I was talking to a doctor at Sunnybrook Hospital about this a couple days ago. What the reason this this all shut down? Number one, flatten the curve, right? What you're seeing in Florida and Arizona right now is in Texas, a del, in te- Texas, a deluge of people, a it's wave a, of people staggering. that, and they they don't have the resources to take care of these people. And it's like in New York a couple months ago. We need more ventilators. We're gonna need these men. We're gonna need fifty thousand more ventilators next week. Like the things that are just impossible to to accommodate. Um. When you are talking about how uh, this is going to go, what they didn't have at the time 
was demographic information. They really didn't know who this affected. Now we have a better sense of who it affects. Are there some outliers? Absolutely, but that's, that's in any business, or sorry, any disease anywhere. There are, it's like, this is the usual target, this is who it usually affects, and sometimes you'll have other, other people, but there might be other circumstances. There's, no gonna, there's not gonna be one, you can't paint it all with one brush, but the reality is that they, we are going to have to learn to live within this, and mm -hmm. life has to go on within this. So to say, oh, just cancel the season and don't try, to me, it's like, well, if they're willing to make, make that bet, if the players are willing to make that bet, if they don't want to go, they shouldn't have to go. And there was a guy uh, they're willing to make that the Lakers bet. who said no today. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, there's, and there's a guy on um, uh, the uh, – uh, Washington, Washington Wizards. Yeah, who I'd never heard of. I didn't yeah. know his name. But, <laughs> Until uh, this morning. <laughs> and that's fine. Like, that, that should be totally cool. Um, but if you're willing to take that risk, like Jason Spezza was talking about, he said, listen, this is like, he, he, they were talking, he was talking to Luke Fox about, you know, he's 38 or 39. And he's like, you know, Jason, how do you feel about being away from your kids for potentially three months? And, and he said, well, they know that daddy's, you know, daddy wants to win a Stanley Cup and there's not much time left to do it. So daddy's got to kind of take the opportunity while he can. Now, Jason's got the opportunity to do that. He's made a lot of money. Um, you know, his wife and kids are going to be okay. They're in Toronto where their family is. So there's, you know, there's some support there too for her. Um, and this isn't going to work for everybody, but we do have to find a way forward. And there will be mistakes along the way. But to say that you just canceled the season and say, screw it, we can't. I don't, I don't think that that's how people work normally. I think that people don't just go, screw it, it's hard. I think they go, we're going to screw this up a little bit along the way, but we're going to learn how to do this and we're going to try. And I, I respect that. I, res I do. I, you know, that could make me unpopular, but I don't really see a world where it makes a lot of sense to just not try. I respect the effort to try. Um, there is no evidence. I'll, I'll just be blunt. There's no evidence to suggest Florida is trying in any no, capacity. They're not. They're not. Florida, Florida is different is a bad than example, a though. bubble that's going to exist within Disney World. Like, I don't I know don't about that, Jesse, because employees are going in and out. No, they, sure. they would close it. They would coordinate that. If they do, that's what they're fine. doing. Fine. Yeah. But baseball? Right. What the fuck? The Lightning and the, and the Panthers like, should literally evacuate like if they can and go somewhere else because otherwise you're not going to be eligible to play uh, in these hub cities. And well, like, that's why they need to decide soon. They need to they need decide to come soon and, and move their ass. They need well, and here's, here's the other thing uh, that I find interesting. So there was an NFL player, I think, who had it, recovered from it, but he still – in the process of recovering from it. And he says he doesn't have his full wind back. Mm -hmm. So let's say he never gets it back. Let's say he's got 85% of his wind um, for the rest of his life, not just career, but the rest of his life. Right. My sure. friend had it. She still doesn't have her full sense of taste back. Wow. Um, and, and she's, unfortunately she's a frontline worker. So she's not sure if she has breathing issues or if it's just from having to wear a mask for eight hours a day, um, you know, taking care of people the guardian angel that she is but so what, what's interesting is one of the frontline reasons the nhl didn't want to go to the olympics or that they used anyway maybe as a front is well you know our players are very valuable john Tavares injured his knee at the olympics and we can't handle john Tavares hurting his knee at this event well what if he suffers like a long-term lung injury and he's never the same again or lung condition, whatever you call it. That's part of the, the inherent yeah. risk. So those and, things and will be written into uh, some sort of CBA amendment where you're taking these risks and insurance policies will be in place. And these players will agree to those stipulations and go play. Mm -hmm. If they I feel the you, need to. I got to tell you, if it were me and this is just me, I would go play. That I would be willing to sign that piece of paper and take that risk. And not everybody's the same, and I don't expect that. But I would want to play. And I get why. And if you're taking all the possible safety precautions that you can, you're following public health, right? That's the key. We're not, we're not talking about, you know, what it's like in Orlando or Miami or Tampa. We're talking, you know, where, where in a, and a governor that's basically, I mean, governor, the governor in Florida blamed it on migrant workers. Again, um, you know, it's not about that. It's about, are you cordoned off? Are you safe? Has everybody quarantined? If, you, if I saw 
on a piece of paper what the strategy was. You, you come into the, your hub city, you quarantine for 14 days, everybody gets tested every day. You know, like all of these things happen. And I was satisfied with those, those things. And those things have obviously not been made public yet because I don't, think we, I don't think they fully know what they are. If you're following the guidelines of health professionals, even Anthony Fauci said, the NFL can come back but they're going to have to do bubble cities just like everybody else. And, and so, you know, if he is saying it and he's the guy who's like, yo, Trump, you're nuts. Like, you know, lock this, lock this down. Um, If he is saying it, then it is possible and it can be done relatively safely. And Steve, you have, you have a valid point. If somebody catches it, doesn't have the same lungs that they had, or it really negatively affects them, or maybe they've got a condition where it really, you know, it's a problem because part of the issue here is that we have no drugs to treat this while you have it. Um, the, the, the problem is that you are, you are accepting that risk. You must accept that risk. And if you're willing to do that, then you have to be, then you have to move forward. And I don't know if it makes a lot of sense um, to just say, to just say, screw it, let's not try. Cause I think, I think, Human beings, if we said, screw it, let's don't try, or let's not try, we would not accomplish what we've been able to accomplish. I just don't think it's in our nature. And I, no. and I, I, th- I can understand, let's screw it. We don't know enough. We don't, I get it. But I definitely think that there are safe ways to do this. Um, and you have to look at, you know, you look at Florida, Steve, and all the, all the things that they have going on there. And then you look at Ontario, where there's less than 200 cases a day. In fact, we're down to less than 170 cases a day. People in Canada talk about Toronto like it's a cesspool of COVID-19. Right, and there's, there's and, been like 50 cases here. Yeah, but who knows? Like there, there's been some really stupid slip-ups recently and, you know, all the videos of Jerry Beach and, and, and all yeah. that. But And there's been tons of protests and, and everybody, Jesse, you were at them. People were yeah. following the rules there. <laughs> yeah. yeah not at Cherry all, Beach, but. Yeah, when the protests happen for Black Lives Matter, it's always everybody's wearing masks, everybody's social distancing. Yeah, but you like know? the the the... Vegas is a unique city in the way that it's built. Mm-hmm. So I could see it, even though the state of Nevada is kind of doing poorly in all this beyond Vegas, anywhere in the United States is a non-option to me as a, as a bubble city, non-option. Um, Florida, well, are you out of your mind? I, well, I, I don't think you'd have it in Florida. I don't think that was it's ever not on the list, right? No, yeah. no, no, no. It's going to no, be a Canadian city and Vegas. Yeah. It's going to be Vancouver yeah. or Toronto or and Edmonton. Vegas or Edmonton. And, yeah, I think but Vancouver's you, a better option than Edmonton at this point, just because do, of the facilities Toronto. that are there. But yeah, what's that? Do Vancouver, Toronto? They could. Well, they're they're going to do Vegas, and yeah. they can remember yeah. if you're if you're an employee in this, you're probably cordoned off as well. Yeah. Like if you're working and cooking for the athletes, or you're cleaning up after, you probably have some pretty strict rules too. Yeah, you just got to hope that no one pulls a friggin' Novak Djokovic and goes oh, up yeah. to town. Do not get me started. No, <laughs> oh, I know. That guy drives me insane anyway. <laughs> I forgot he was an anti-vaxxer, and then Jesse uh, reminded me. I was like, oh, my yeah. God. And his wife I, shares I, conspiracy 5G theories on her Instagram. So, great, yeah. great people. It's yeah, amazing how like it tracks like 5G like, made you a fucking idiot. <laughs> Was it 5G or are you just an idiot? Sorry, I'm tired and I don't have the time. I do not have the time. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. Uh, listen, Steve, we're going to let you go because you got to go be a parent. But yeah, we are. I really took a left turn. Oh, we had to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm like. sure. Listen, we can't do a show without me saying something that people are going to be really mad at me for. Like, to how dare I, right? I yeah. can't wait for the how dare you messages i can't wait i remember uh, last episode when adam said the fresh prince of bel-air sucks yeah that especially that take. scene with uncle Phil and, and, yeah uh, will smith at the end where he was like his dad left and he was like you don't want me man i'm like who mm-hmm. would adam uh, adam declared that <laughs> on father's day he said yeah, wow make, that scene up. is the worst scene in tv <laughs> history <laughs> You're making this up. I didn't up. say that. I, didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't Me and Leo are going to beat you up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> congratulations to you. Congratulations to Mrs. Dangle and your families. And we hope that uh, you get some sleep. And uh, we can't wait to watch Leo grow up. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness. Connection complete.